Hi guys, it's me Leon here to do a daily word with you guys. Well, let's pray and ask God to bless our time. Father God, I thank you so much for sending your son to die for our sins, so our sins would be forgiven. And I just ask you to bless our time, Father God. Help our hearts and our ears to be open to what it is you want to teach us today, Father. Thank you so much for this opportunity to serve you, Father. Love you and praise you. Bless our time together. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Well, I hope everybody's doing good. Let's get into the Word. <clears throat> what makes a home? Hmm. In Psalms 127, 1 through 5, there's scriptures that you could go read. But the verse we're going to hear today is Psalms 127, 1. But on your own, go read Psalms 127, 1 through 5, okay? When you get a chance. Anyway, Psalms 127, 1 says, Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders are in vain. As parents, we sometimes wonder if we actually have a home. Or is it merely a stopover place to eat, do laundry, hang around, and sleep? Is it just a place to repair, mow the lawn, pay off the mortgage, and paint, wallpaper, install new carpet, and get quick cash? A true home is much more than that. It is a place where people, they're living, and they're growing, they're dying, and they're crying, and they're learning, and they're creating together. A small child was once quoted after watching his house burn down. We still have a home. We just don't have a house to put it in. How perspective. Our home should be a trauma center for the whole family. We don't have to be perfect. Just forgiven. We can grow. We can make mistakes. We can laugh. We can cry. We can agree. We can disagree. Home should be a place where happy experiences occur. A place sheltered from problems of the world. A place of love, acceptance, and security. When we read the morning newspaper, we're confronted with all kinds of strategies. They're all around us, and we realize that the world outside our front door, it's falling apart. But within our four walls, we can offer a place called home. What can we do to have a home like God intended? As with everything in life, when something is broken, we go back to the instruction book. In this case, it is the Bible. The home is God's idea, not something invented by the 20th century Americans. In the original plan of God's creation, he designed the home to be the foundation of security and society, a place to meet the mental and spiritual, physical, and emotional needs of people. Scripture states that the family is a permanent relationship, not to be divided. Marriage is instituted by God to accomplish his plan in our society. In marriage, a husband and a wife become one, building a permanent relationship. It is not temporary convenience to be upheld as long as it's fun and feels good. God designed the family as a permanent relationship in which, with his care, humans to weather the storms of life together. The home is God's loving shelter for growing to maturity. Even though God designed marriage, family, and a home to be a permanent relationship, it isn't automatic. The members of the family must work together at making a true home. As parents, we are responsible to lead the way. We are to direct the paths of our children, to show the way. Loving and living with your partner and children takes determination, practice, plus time and imagination, sacrifice, planning, and a lot more. It takes more than just love and determination. In our key verse for today, we read, Unless the Lord builds a house, its builders labor in vain. God is not only the designer, but he also wants to occupy the headship of the family life. He wants to guide and to give love, peace, and forgiveness abundantly. Solomon spoke to the, about the subject of Proverbs 24, 3-4. By wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. 
to acknowledge its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. Solomon's big three in home instructions is wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. We got our work cut out for us if we want to have a true home. We can't do a very good job unless we roll up our sleeves and get busy. There's not much time to be listless and, and non-directed. We must live life with a big purpose to have not just a home, not just a house, but a home. In order to do this seemingly impossible task, we must yield our hearts and our soul and life to God's Son, Jesus Christ. The future of your family and your eternal destiny depends on your relationship with God. If you haven't accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, not as a couple, but everybody individually, do it today. Make him the center of your life in your home. Read your Bible each day and gain guidance for your life and family. Pray that God will help you fulfill your family responsibilities, realizing that he wants to help your family to be a testimony to the world. If you are not already doing so, seek out a Bible-believing church. We all need this encouragement and fellowship with other Christians as well as an instruction book, God's Word. With Christ as Lord of your family, you can have a happy home. If you yield to him daily, your home can be more than just a place. It can be a true family, living and growing and learning together with God. Father God, you know we want our home to be more than just a place. We want it to be a home where you have your throne. We want to yield to your leadership. Give us wisdom and understanding and knowledge to see us through the seemingly impossible task of making a home. Thank you for giving us your instruction manual. May we read it each day to gain your insight. We personally feel so inadequate. With your power, we can do it. Thank you, Father, for your help. In Jesus' and precious and mighty name, I pray. So are you going to take action? Settle the lordship of your home today. If you aren't a child of God, become one now by trusting Jesus Christ. Pray for your home and its various members. What are you going to do to make your house a home? Ask your spouse to help you commit to this, these goals today. In Romans 3.23, in God's word, it says, But we all have sinned and fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet now God in his glorious kindness declares us not guilty. He has done this through Christ Jesus, who has freed us by taking away our sins. And one more verse. And that would be in Romans 6.23. Okay, right here. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Father, thank you for your word today, Father God. I pray that we would go out into the world and let our light shine, Father, and, and pray for our families, Lord God. I pray that you would just bless each and every one's families, Lord, and help them, Lord, to make their home a home, a real home, not just a place to stop, but a home where your family feels protected. Thank you, Father. I pray for every marriage. I pray for every person that's hurting right now, Father, that you would just touch their hearts and, and they would accept you as their Lord and Savior, Father, and you just totally change their life forever, Father. Thank you so much, Lord, for your word and your truth. I love you and praise you. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, amen. Well, guys, it's been really nice. God bless you, and I pray that... Um, after this day, your life is so blessed. All right, God bless you.